All right, let's lose some of the tedium. All right, don't worry, tedium's coming back in chapter three. But for chapter two, we're very, pretty much done with the tedium, okay? Um, in this video, we're gonna talk about limits of rational functions. I've started putting the titles in green. So if you ever see a title that's not in green, send me a message and say, Jason, you forgot to keep things green. All right, um, uh, so you may have noticed in these last, in these last videos, 10 over 31 was our limit value. 10 over 31 was also just a function value. It, it turns out that we really could have just plugged in three and gotten the answer. It turns out. In the first one, example 1a from the last video, we basically could have just plugged in three into this function as well and gotten the limit. We would have gotten the right answer. So a natural question arises, does that work all the time? If not, when does it work? When can we just plug in, that's known as direct substitution, to evaluate limits? And it has a, has a pretty simple answer that we're gonna talk about in the next section. In fact, I'm gonna give it away a little bit right now. The answer is continuity. We've talked a little bit about continuity, but it turns out that one of the definitions of continuity is just, is the function value equal to the limit? All right, but we'll save that for 2.4. I, I wanna give you guys something to look forward to, so I don't wanna spoil it all now. So let's kind of, uh, let's stay in 2.3 for now. Okay, and we're gonna start by talking about limits of rational functions. Specifically, let's look at some limit laws for that. Oh, oh that's not the right thing. Some limit laws for that, <laughs> right on schedule. So we have this theorem. In the book, it's known as theorem 2.6. It's also on your little limit sheet for this section. And it says that if we have two polynomial functions, P and Q, and A is some real number, then the limit of a polynomial is just the function value at that point, right? As X is approaching A, polynomials, it turns out, are continuous. So the limit is just equal to the function value. And it's the same for rational functions. Rational functions are just one polynomial divided by another polynomial. And the book kind of shows you like where this comes from. It's a proof. And it's basically saying, okay, every polynomial looks like this. It's just some number times some power function. So you can just use a heck of a lot of addition rules with a heck of a lot of constant multiple rules, with a heck of a lot of power rules, and get this result. And then you can just use a quotient rule to get the next result. So this can be proved pretty easily. We're not going to do it together, though. But you could if you wanted to. All right, it's not too bad. So let us use this a little bit. Okay, example two. Evaluate. And again, this is the known as some sometimes the known as known as direct substitution. All right, so let us do this. Part A is going to be the limit as x approaches three of two x squared minus three x plus one over x cubed plus four. And you might say, Jason, this is looking a little familiar. It's the same problem as example 1b. The difference is we're gonna use our new tools. So instead of using the sum and the product and the power and the constant multiple and all, wait, we didn't use the product rule. Constant multiple, power, quotient, and two pages of work. Instead of doing that, we're just gonna use the, the, the property, that theorem for rational functions. So we're going to say, okay, this is, that's not how you spell the word is. <laughs> this is, I wouldn't do very well in a spelling bee. This is a rational function. So, oh, and again, there was one thing I didn't make a big deal out of, but let's, let's comment on it really quick. The second one, for rational functions, it's only true when the denominator is not zero. 
If that denominator is equal to zero, this property does not work. Okay. This is a rational function and x cubed plus four is not equal to zero. Near x equals three, or at x equals three. So we can literally just say this is equal to two times three squared minus three times three plus one. We can just plug it in, which is a little quicker. Thank you, property of rational functions. Thank you, mathematicians of old, for that little property. Although I guess mathematicians of old are the ones who got us into this mess in the first place. If we just never did math. Well, if we never did math, we wouldn't have a video for you to watch. Which, again, you might not be upset about not having a math video. But trust me, <laughs> you'd be sad about maybe the other videos. I don't know. Anyway, you can just evaluate this. And again, just like before, it's going to be 10 over 31. That is what it came out to, right? 10 over 31. You could use a calculator here and plug this into. All right. So that's how you use that theorem. That's nice. As long as the denominator is not zero at this point. Let's do another part. Let's call it part B. Evaluate the limit as x goes to 1 of x squared minus 1 divided by x minus 1. Great. Um, this is a rational equation. So we can just plug in 1 squared minus 1 divided by 1 minus 1. Simplify. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Uh, we didn't justify our answer. It's a rational function. And we can use direct substitution because the denominator is not equal to zero. Oh, wait. The denominator is equal to zero. We can't use this. Can't use this property because the denominator equals zero. This property, right, this theorem, you can only use direct substitution. You can only plug in for a rational function, that limit, if the function value on the denominator is not equal to zero. We can't use this. So you might be saying, well, Jason, how am I going to go to sleep tonight? You're going to have to watch the next video. We got a cliffhanger ending of this video. <gasps> All right, so uh, we'll talk about how to deal with this in the next video. Bye-bye.